this time we're making a hair and we're probably going to be using quite a few different techniques so try to follow it quite carefully okay i'll create a new collection just for a hair so what you do is just right click and put in and when you're done with that we'll start by creating a curve here so make sure the collection is selected because we want objects to be created in the collection shift a and in the curve options let's just use a path i think path is probably the easiest one to control let's hide the head for now so we can see our path and we will now have to add the shape which we want our hair to be i will start by testing a circle shape and I will select my path, go into this green type of menu and under the geometry, there's an object choice. The bell object, this icon and choose our busier circle. Now the circle will control how our hair will be shaped. So what I'm going to do is turn off the snapping tool and move this a bit higher so we can see it a bit better. Let me change my viewports so the lines itself will be a bit more visible. Okay, when we can see everything clearly, we can start shipping our hair. Now, I'll probably select everything and press V key and set everything to free and scale it a bit lower i want my hair not to be exactly like noodle but it be more stretched out on one side so what i'm going to do is press s and limit the scale on x axis so just press x and scale it a bit like this i want my hair to have a bit of the sharper options so what I'm going to do is select these two parts and scale them on E axis. We have something like this now. What you can do is scale opposite sides a bit more. Like that it should make sides sharper. And we can do a small test. So first I'm going to select both of the endings and Press Alt S. Alt S is for scaling this part. And I will make it really small. But I will unhide our head. Select every everything with the A. With the G, I'll move it. And I think that my hair is a bit too thick. So I'll go back into the circle. Select everything and scale it on E axis because I want it to be slimmer. Now, when we're done with that, I'll grab everything again with the A, try to get it in the position, and start positioning individual dots in their places. I usually try to keep the distances between these dots quite similar, but it doesn't have to be. Let's say I want to have this part sharper. What I'm going to do is select both of these, both of these points, press right mouse click and choose subdivide. I can move this dot a bit closer to that point. And you can see how much sharper it becomes. So I might this use this. Our curve hair at this point has way too much vertices. So I want to decrease the count. You can scroll up in this menu and lower the resolution preview to something like five. You should do the same with the circle. It seems like it's set to five already. We can set it to four, five, just check which one works. It doesn't really change look that much, but you can see that the segments start to appear. 
you want to for Leo here what you can do is select everything and press ctrl T and now if you move your mouse in the circle you will see that it will twirl here is a tilt as well in the menu of item transforms and tilt so if you don't want to use the shortcut you can use this tilt option and let's position it where it should be I think I put it a bit too high up should be closer to the body, to the head. And it might be that the hair itself is a bit too... Okay, let's select everything to twirl it together. I think that, that this part is a bit too big. So what I'm going to do is select these parts which I didn't scale yet and scale them a bit down. And choose this which ones you want to make a bit smaller which ones you want to make a bit bigger now we can just select everything and press shift d for a duplication sometimes i use a little bit of cheat by going into the this option and choosing activate element now if i hold shift and press on this small point Press it again, it's going to be white highlighted. And if I press rotate, it's going to rotate from this point. So sometimes it becomes a bit easier to position the hair this way. And nothing new, just work about how to position your hair. We can duplicate it again. If we want to use, we can use the same technique. Rotate it from this. It's very essential to have a good reference on how to position this here. So now we're going to position one inner part. There, this one will be pretty close to the face to the head itself and I think we want to change a bit of scale on this so Alt S and now I feel like my hair is a bit too flat so what I will do is go back to my Circle option, select these two, and I'll actually select one individually. Move it a bit up, but I will move these handles a bit down. Maybe move it a bit more up, and just play with the shape. Doesn't have to be perfect. This way we get a bit more variation in the hair. And you're always free to play with these shapes however you want. I'll have something like this for now. If you want, you can select few points and hit subdivide and you will get a new handles which you can play with some of the hair of this character has a bit more difference at the top of the hair so that's what you like you can be using I usually, I usually like to keep it pretty clean so I don't really like to have too many you can always disappear them with X and just delete these. Everything is going to keep the same as before. Okay, let's move on. I think that this part is a bit too high, so I'll lower it again. Maybe move these two closer. 
play with the tilt option on both of the strands try to make the points very close to each other and I'll add a new one now you don't have to permanently use only S alt S you can use the S option too to scale everything so I'll scale this one a bit bigger S well, actually what I'm going to do with this N I think we need a bit more variation so I'll select this part subdivide it and do something like this so we can subdivide it this point again to have a bit more control over the edge drag it down we can add one more point in here just so it doesn't have such a big distance between each of the dot again don't forget that you can tilt I see that my uh, is a bit tilted in the wrong direction and we can actually use one another tool which is really helpful so if you select any point of your hair, we can use proportional editing. So I'll turn this on. And in here, I'll choose connected only. And if I move now, you will see a small circle. With the mouse wheel, I will increase the size or decrease the size. And now I can edit my hair position this way. Sometimes can be very, very useful to get a smooth change. I'll move a bit to another strand. And there I can show that this part has to be a bit overlapping. And even that twirl option will have this effect too with the proportional editing. I still think that our hair is a bit too slim, so again, I'll try to play with the shape. Maybe a bit more. And now I think it's getting better. I think I moved my hair a bit too close to here. So what you can do is select a few parts. From the hair and we still have proportional editing on and we can move it a bit away perfect now let's go back with adding a bit more strands because we're definitely lacking if you want to use the shortcut for this it's o as you can see o but you can just press this button it's not that far so i'll turn it off select um really any strand i think i will select this one just because the shape is the closest of what we need next i'll duplicate it move it actually scale this one with the s and try to correctly position it i'll work a bit with what we did before i want these to be a bit closer to each other we're getting some interceptions we're gonna be fixing that a bit later so then the concept this has to be on top of everything and if you're really lost with the curves you can see that the one that you have selected now is highlighted by orange whole curve not even the part that you just selected and you can see the one is deselected so I see that this one is a bit too high. I'll select that and move it down. We're probably going to be changing our position a bit later more drastically, but for now, 
just to have a red fitting shape. And if you have some open up these parts, what you can do is select them all and extrude them with the E and push them in. Now we have something like this looking pretty clean. Let's start forming our hair again. So this one in the reference is a bit bent. If I start to see that it's pixelating too much, where's my annotation? Let's quickly draw that if you, it's hard for to see. So I can see that it, my mesh is now it's very low poly. Here's one face. Here's another face. And this is definitely way too little. You can have way more. Oh, I was drawing on the surfaces. Let's turn that off. So what you can do is increase whole resolution, but I never recommend this. I always recommend inserting a few more points. So I'll select the points where I think I need more and right click subdivide again. I think this one is a bit too far from the face. Now press O to use the proportional editing and move it closer. I still see this orange one, so I'll just have to follow the color and try to fit in and move. Now I see that this part might be a bit thicker than everything else. So I'll press Alt S and increase just the size in this part. I see that these ones are intercepting too much. So I'll just try to move them a bit away. And we're getting a pretty good, pretty good beginning. This one has to be shorter. I moved here. Very, very important skill is teaching yourself to follow reference as closely as possible. Probably most underrated skill. And we can add one more. So I'll duplicate this one. Drag it a bit up. The more you're adding, the harder it quite becomes. Now, when I don't want to really turn off my proportioning tool, I can just lower the radius of it and go back with using it. This one's going to be quite high on top, but quite short. Let's tilt it. And I think this one can be a bit slimmer in the middle part. I can all S. And position them in the correct place. I think I'll play with the tilt a bit more. And we have a quite nice beginning for our hair. For the top of the hair, we'll be using a different technique. Okay, so let's not forget to save our files. 